Hello, Flame community. This is Jeff Kyle with the Flame Learning Channel. The inference node is new to the Flame 2025.1 update, and it allows us to import third-party machine learning trained models and use them to manipulate footage inside of Flame. In this video, we'll be covering what the inference node is, where you can find it, and how it all works. If you're familiar with Matchbox shaders, this new inference node can be seen as the Matchbox of machine learning. Whereas Matchbox shaders use GLSL to drive its image modification, the inference node uses machine learning models in a format called ONNX, or Open Neural Network Exchange. Currently, only ONNX is supported with the inference node, but most PyTorch models can be converted to ONNX, allowing you to work with either type. You can find more information about ONNX at their website, onnx.ai, and can find some sample train models on their GitHub. As to using the inference node, we can find it inside of batch and batch effects. When we bring the inference node into the batch schematic, we're met with a window that lets us load our train model either in the ONNX format or in an INF inference format. I have a sample model called Candy that I've loaded that I'll be using here, and when I select Candy from the inference model folder, we can see the name of the node has changed from inference to the name of the model. And when I look at the result of the node with the F4 keyboard shortcut, the Candy neural style has successfully been applied to my source footage. Let's take a look at some of our controls here. On the left, under Model Selection, we can see the name of the currently loaded model with the option to change the model to something else. Under that, for Linux users, we'll find an additional engine cache option, allowing users with the appropriate graphics card to take advantage of NVIDIA's tensor cores, helping to significantly increase inference speed. The engine cache is generated per model, resolution, and GPU combination. So for multiple clips of the same resolution, on the same machine, using the same model, using that cache will help save some time performing the inference. To the right, there's an input resizing section that tells us the resolution of the model. Some models, like the one I'm using here, will require a fixed width dictated by what the data was trained on, while other models will simply pass through the front clip's resolution. If we're doing any resizing, again like I am here, we have some familiar filtering settings to ensure we're resizing it optimally. On the right is the output resizing field, which, once again, is dependent on whether or not we're doing any resizing, and if we are, this field is dictated by the front input resolution, giving us all the same filtering options to control the resize. That's about it for working with the inference node and trained models inside of Flame, but there are a few more slightly advanced steps when it comes to setting up an ONNX model from scratch. We could just import an ONNX model downloaded from the web by itself straight into the inference node, but some models may require adjusting specific settings before they'll work correctly. Flame is able to take advantage of a JSON sidecar file to dictate much of the Flame specific settings to allow the ONNX model to work properly. Instead of looking through documentation to make sure we're setting it up correctly, we can use the Inference Builder tool, which is similar to the Shader Builder tool for Matchbox shaders, to help set up inference files. We can find the Inference Builder tool inside of Opt, Autodesk, our current Flame version, in my case today, it's Flame 2025.1, and Bin. Pulling up the Inference Builder tool here should give you a good idea of how you can use the tool in general, but to create the JSON sidecar file, we'd first navigate to the Inference Builder tool, as I have here, then use the J switch, and finally navigate to the ONNX file in question. The tool will create a properly formatted JSON file that can be modified based on the needs of your inference and the specifics of the trained model. In my case, I know this candy model has been trained with unsigned integers in the range of 0 to 255, as opposed to 0 to 1. So Flame needs to know to apply that 255 gain on the input and an inverse gain of 255 on the output. So I've made those changes here inside of the JSON file. As one more step, if we have a thumbnail handy, we can package everything up into an encrypted INF file. Back in the Inference Builder tool, we can use the P switch to package everything up, and it looks for all of the necessary pieces, the ONNX file, the JSON sidecar file, and the thumbnail, and creates an encrypted INF file, all packaged up and ready to use. If I switch back into Flame and bring out a fresh Inference node, here I am in the location I was working in, and I can see that there are two candies now, since my settings are set to look at both ONNX files and inference files. But if I switch that setting to only show inference files, I'll look at the INF file we just created with the thumbnail, and everything is working as intended.
Hopefully that gives you a good sense of how to set up ONNX models inside of Flame. But with all of this in mind, the potential of the inference node lies not necessarily in itself, but in the larger community and how we are able to leverage trained models. By sharing and utilizing models trained by others, we can significantly expand our creative toolkit inside of Flame and achieve some incredible results. If you like these videos and you're finding them helpful, please subscribe to the Flame Learning Channel and click the bell to stay notified about new content. Feel free to comment any questions or suggestions below. Until next time, thanks a bunch for watching.